This video is sponsored by Surfshark. I remember one day in film school, my film aesthetics teacher walked in. He was excited, giggling like a child. He said, I have a special treat for you today. That treat was a 35mm film print of In the Mood for Love. It was an experience I will never forget. Watching it on a large screen, feeling the texture of lights and shadows, a wash of film grains like memories clouded being played back on an old projector. I feast on every detail on screen, from the aesthetic to the visual metaphor. Details like showing a man's conflict by letting him walk home only to have his mirror reflection walks away. Hidden in plain sight is another layer of story that you might have felt but otherwise go unnoticed. Today, we'll go through In the Mood for Love. I'll show you those layers of story hidden within the picture. And hopefully through this, you can gain a better appreciation for this film and films in general. Set in 1960s Hong Kong, In the Mood for Love tells the story of Mr. Cha and Mrs. Chan. They move into the same apartment building, along with their respective spouses. In the first five minutes, the film immediately establishes how crowded the environment is, for a reason that will be clear to us soon. We know these two each rented a room, yet the film never once showed the rooms in full. Instead, opting to film the majority of the scenes through hallways, where people are pushed not only against the wall, but to the edge of the frame. And when we do see the room, it's either through a window or a door, which is almost always kept open. It's a significant detail, because these five minutes don't just show us how crowded the living condition is, but rather how little privacy exists within 1960s Hong Kong. Conversations are filmed non-traditionally. Oftentimes, characters' faces overlap. Other times, it's a single long take from the side. Still others, only one side of the conversation is seen. The imperfection feels spontaneous and candid. Added with the long hallways and door frames, it is as if we are looking down the hallway and seeing parts of the story. In essence, we are also one of the neighbors. Soon, Mrs. Chen realizes her husband is cheating on her with Chao's wife. Chen and Chao meet in a diner, and Mrs. Chen breaks the news to him in a suspenseful, roundabout way, which I won't spoil it here. But notice how before she breaks the news, the film cuts between the two characters. Despite them being in close proximity, they don't occupy the same screen space. But as soon as Mrs. Chan decides to break the news, the camera pans between the two. They still don't occupy the same frame, but there is now a connection between them. And after they leave the diner, finally the two now exist in the same frame, walking together. A tragic friendship forms between Chao and Chen, as they keep each other company. Which, in this environment with little privacy, will inevitably stir up some gossip. Before we continue, first, a word from our sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is an award-winning VPN that helps protect your online security and more. If you are a fan of this channel, you have probably experienced the frustration of looking for a specific foreign film, only to realize it's not available for streaming in your region. That's where a VPN service can help you. Surfshark unlocks blocked content by switching your IP address to one of over 50 countries of your choosing. And if you are a frequent traveler like me, you can also use Surfshark to get access to contents back home. 
And the best part? Your privacy will be protected the entire time. Surfshark encrypts all the information sent to and from your devices, keeping you safe from hackers, criminals, and surveillance. If that sounds interesting to you, good news! Viewers from this channel can get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deals.accented. Enter the promo code ACCENTED for a whopping 83% off and one extra month for free. Give Surfshark a try today. Link in the description below. We left off with Chow and Chen leaving the diner together. This is literally the next scene. After some casual banter about each other's spouses, Chow says, What happened? Are they together? They are play acting, trying to figure out how the affair started. Remember this? Yet, I bet many of us jumped to the conclusion that they started an affair of their own. That's what I did when I first saw this film. Yet the hint is right there. Notice the vertical shadows, like a gel in trapping the guilty party, especially prominent right when they hold hands. Yet when the truth is revealed, it is shown that we have been looking out a window. The prison bars entrap us, not them. We are seeing nothing but fragments, parts of the larger image and we jumped to a conclusion. Remember when I said their relationship stirs up gossip? Well, the film only ever addresses gossip once. In a short, almost throwaway scene. But the pressure of the gossip is ever-present. Through imagery, we already know that there is no privacy but the cinematography goes beyond that. Through windows, mirrors, people's bodies. We are the neighbors, the co-workers, the taxi drivers. We are always spying on them, forming our own conclusions. We are the ever-present neighbor that spreads the gossip. Finally, let's talk about how these ideas are expanded upon. In the move for love often repeats scenes, to show the progression of time and emphasize the changes and story progression. Right after their first play acting, the next scene shows them in the diner again. Chen and Chao order food for each other, dishes that the spouses like. This time, the camera is closer, much more intimate, the dollying is gentle, sensual. The conversation is no longer filmed from the side, we are in the moment, and they even occupy the same screen space. For this brief scene, we are no longer the nosy neighbor, we see everything. But there is one more detail. For the unusually long two shot, they never talk. And when they do, the other is either off screen or just a back of a head. That is significant. In their play act, Mrs. Chen tries to act like Chao's wife, and Chao, Chen's husband. On one hand, Mrs. Chen is trying to be the woman her husband is in love with. At the same time, She's being the woman Chao loves. There is this duality, this ambiguity in their conversations. Where we don't know if they are talking to their spouses or if they are saying things as themselves. So, instead of talking to an identifiable, specific person, they talk to a generic back of a head. 
This duality is used multiple times throughout the film, where you are unsure who's who, is this part of the act or is this real? Perhaps to the surprise of no one, the two slowly fall in love. Or did they? Are we looking at them play acting? Even during the climax, when Chow confesses his love, are they really in love? Or are they merely in love with a version of the spouses? In a single shot that absolutely destroyed me, after the confession, Chow wants to end the affair before it begins. In a dreamlike fashion, the film runs at half the frame rate. Chow lets go of her hand and walks away. Chen turns around, Chow in the background, small, out of focus. Chen's face painted by shadows with one last struggle, and she finally turns away from the light completely. In the Mood for Love is poetry on film. And like poetry, it's hard to explain. It's just something that you have to experience. Because hidden within the sight and sound, there is something beyond words. A mood, a qualia. I tried my best to show you how to reach that layer, and I only barely scratched the surface. And now, it's time for you to go watch it and rewatch it. The film is worthy of your time every time.